whatever I don't finish, I'll finish up, Lord willing, next Sunday. Father in heaven, uh, sometimes scripture can be a mystery. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to understand. But I pray, Lord, that you'll help me to share this that will be simple and clear. In Jesus' name, amen. Daniel chapter 9. Babylon has fallen. And Daniel is saying that he was studying Jeremiah. Jeremiah is an old prophet. Jeremiah was before Daniel. Daniel has the book of Jeremiah, and Daniel is studying it. He found in the book of Jeremiah where it was written that 70 years was it was, should be accomplished in the desolations of, it, of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon. Babylon came and, and destroyed Jerusalem. And so, I'm sorry, not Babylon, but the Romans did in 70 AD. I'm getting ahead of myself. The Romans in 70 AD came in and destroyed Jerusalem. And Jeremiah is, is uh, the prophet that was before Daniel. And we're going to turn to, to Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25. Okay. Jeremiah speaks of this desolation. And the first desolation was uh, by the Babylonians, the second desolations, uh, the second desolation of Jerusalem was by the Roman army in, in after Jesus was uh, crucified. So this first desolation that's spoken of here by the prophet Jeremiah, this is where Daniel was reading. Daniel was reading the very verses that you have there in front of you, chapter 25, verse 8 through 11. I'll read it there quickly. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. I want you to notice that the Lord calls him his servant. Um, Nebuchadnezzar is not serving the Lord in the respect that you and, you and I serve the Lord. He's serving him in a different way, in a different capacity. He's going to serve the Lord in the fact that the Lord causes men, kings to rise and kings to fall. But he's going to use Nebuchadnezzar to desolate the children of Israel. He is going to use Nebuchadnezzar as a servant to do that. The king of Babylon will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all the nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and hissing and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take them from the voice, I will take from them the voice of myrrh, voice of gladness, voice of the bridegroom, voice of the bride, the sound of millstone and light of the candle, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon. How many years? Seventy years. There it is. Now, that particular 70 is 70 years. That is 70 years. This, however, is a little different. The word weeks that's used in, in Daniel, and I have to get there first before I can, okay. Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. 20 let's go with, uh, uh, verse 21 would be good. Now, um, we'll find in another chapter that actually, uh, the incarnate Jesus appears to, uh, to Daniel. In this case, it's Gabriel. Verse 21, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, which would be 3 p.m. when they did the evening sacrifice. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I'm now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. Seventy weeks. 
Now, the word weeks here is like our word dozen. Whenever we say we have a dozen, how many is that? Twelve. And it don't matter how, many, how, how you use the word dozen. A dozen donuts is how many? A baker's dozen is how many? <laughs> Boy, you guys are all right. I have to say to you, like, the, like our guide tour on the bus would say something about Puerto Rico, and then he'd say, are you with me? We'd all say, yeah, where else are we going to go? It's not like we can just go get a cup of coffee on the bus. All right, anyway. 70 weeks. Now, is 70 weeks, if there are seven years, there are, I didn't explain it quite well. There are seven years uh, a day in one week. All right? In other words, one week equals seven years. Who's a, who, anybody here like numbers? How many of you like numbers in school? They called it math when I was in school. They call it algebra now. You like numbers. All right? If there's seven years in one week, how many is there in 70? There we go. There's a number I want you to remember. 490 years. This is the amount of time we're talking about. This prophecy is involving 490 years. That's the prophecy. Now, I'm going to break this up so you can understand where we're at with this. Verse 24, you with me? I don't hear anybody. If you're with me, say amen. amen. All right. Verse 24, I want you to see where I'm getting this because this is important. Seventy weeks are determined. That's 490 years upon Israel and the holy city. Now, there's a number of things that has to happen. There's six things that's got to happen. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. These are all the things that need to be accomplished. <coughs> now, I don't have time to explain it. I'll explain it next Sunday, Lord willing. I'm going to just go through and kind of hit the highlights, and I'll go back next Sunday and ex explain this more. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem. Now, the commandment has to do with the commandment uh, by Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes in Nehemiah chapter 2 gives a commandment and, and tells the cupbearer, who is Nehemiah, Nehemiah would test the wine, he would test it first before it was given to the king. Why is that? If it was poisonous, you know Nehemiah was expendable, but the king wasn't. So Nehemiah was much like a secret service man in, in our government today. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. And so he just came to the king one day, and he, and, and he was sad. He was of sad countenance. The king said, what's the matter, Nehemiah? <clears throat> of course, Nehemiah and the king got, got to be pretty close, you know. <laughs> and so... They confided with one another, I'm sure. And, and, and so Nehemiah said, my brother told me that Jerusalem is a real mess. That would be our vernacular today. It's been burnt. The walls have been breached. Many of the, the walls around my hometown have been destroyed. Uh, many of the houses have been burnt. And he said, I would really like to go back and, and make repairs and, and, and work on that. And, and the king says, That'll be fine. I'll give you whatever you need. And so that starts the proclamation. That starts the decree that the king has given in order for this work to be done. Now, you need to understand that this is all part of the prophecy. Know, therefore, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. Okay. So we need to put up here. <laughs> okay. Who's, where's my mathematician at? 69. 69 what? Six 
69 years. 69 years. Okay. No, no, it's more than that. It's got uh, 49 times. All right, let me get this. Seven times. Seven plus 60 plus two is 69 weeks. All right, that's our, that's our, that's our weeks. I know, now I'm trying to confuse you. Not willingly. 69 weeks. Now we know there's 70 weeks involved. Till Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The street shall be built and the wall in troublesome times. Now we know that that really did occur because when the walls were trying to be repaired, Sambalat and Tobiah were there to try to bring resistance to Nehemiah. There wasn't any physical harm, but they just, they just intimidated them. They tried to stop them from doing that. Okay, uh, and so quickly, I'm, I'm out of time. If this is 69 weeks, we need one more week. We gotta get one more week, okay? We gotta keep reading. Uh, the street shall be built again. You're still with me? Are you still with me? Verse 25. Verse 26, after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. That means he'll be crucified, not for himself. No, he didn't die for himself. He died for the whole world. And the people, which are the Romans, and I want you to notice the word prince here is a small p. This prince is the Antichrist. Back in verse 25, you'll see Messiah the prince. That has a big P. That means Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Messiah prince. This prince is the Antichrist. That shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Flood just simply means uh, many uh, things will come, not water. Not flood as we know water. It's just going to be a lot of desolation. Until the end of the, of the war, desolations are determined. Verse 27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for what? There's our, there's our other week. That's our other week. That makes what? 70 weeks. Now, the tribulation week is what is the week I just read. Here's the tribulation week. I'm just doing this quickly, but I'm going to explain it more next Sunday. He shall confirm the covenant with many for what? And how many, and how many years are in this kind of week? Seven years. That's where we get it. That is the tribulation week. Now you know where we get it. He will confirm the covenant. Who's he? The Antichrist. The Antichrist will sign a peace treaty with Israel. And the very day that he signs a peace treaty with Israel will start the time clock for the tribulation week. When he signs it, Antichrist will make it a, a, a treaty with Israel. It's a peace treaty. When they shall cry, peace, peace, sudden destruction shall befall them. So that's the week where we're looking for, but we got there quickly. A little too fast. A little too fast. I've got to back up a little bit. So here, here's the seven. The last week is seven years. Now, the thing that we're going to keep in mind in our study of Revelation, you're going to see this a lot, and this. That's what you're going to see. And that is seven year. That's our tribulation. And why did I put this in here? Because that week is divided. That week is divided. How do we know that? Are you with me? Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease for the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate or Israel. The desolate is Israel. It's referring to Israel. So the midst of the week, the Antichrist decides he's going to change his mind and things get really bad from there. So we have the first three and a half years and the second three and a half years. And the second three and a half years is referred to as the Great Tribulation. That's when things really get bad. You thought it was getting bad here. Nothing compared to when the seals are opened in Revelation and that what happens here. So in our study in Revelation, I'm basically just going to use this week, and I'm going to tell you that chapter such and such is here. 
Chapter such and such is here. Chapter so and so is here. Uh, chapter, oh, oh, we, it's, that's over here. That's the beginning of the great tribulation, this chapter. And from this chapter on deals with the last three and a half years. So I'm going to try with the Lord willing to teach the book of Revelation in a chronological way. So that, so that through scripture, you can understand what's going to happen at certain times in the chronological sequence of what will take place and read the book of Revelation for you and try to help sort that out for you. It's interesting. I love it. And you will too. Try to make it as exciting as possible. Are you still with me? Yeah. You, and you still understand where we got the week. That's the tribulation week. Now, how many of you didn't really never know that before? Be honest. I can tell you it was a lot of long time for me to really get it. Now, I mean, I read it, and, they, and you could tell me a dozen times, and I still didn't quite get it. You know what I mean? I still didn't get it. But I want you to get it, because when you get it, you won't forget it. You won't forget it. And then Revelation will be interesting to you, because you'll understand Revelation in a way that you never understood it before. It's all stands. Time gone. Wow, I just got started. How to quit? All right. Next Sunday, I'm going to go back through this. Come back. I'm going to go back through this, and I'm going to and I'm going to sort some of the things out here in 24, and explain what those things are in 24 that needs to be done. Then I have a special lesson on this same subject that I'm keeping for Palm Sunday. I'm going to use this same text for Palm Sunday, Lord willing, to show you the exactness of God's prophecy, to show to you in the scripture the very day, the very month, and the very year that Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. I'll show you in the scripture the exact day, the exact month, and exact year. That's the God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious word. So exciting, like a wonderful puzzle. Every piece has its place. And the more I study it and see it, oh, the more I just love it. Lord, I'm so thankful you died for me. And you allowed us to have a copy of your precious word. What a blessing it is to us. What a blessing it is to read it. And Lord, you said there'd be a blessing of those who read the book of Revelation. So Lord, I'm looking forward to it. It's time to go home, Lord. Didn't get a whole lot done today, but Father, we just ask you to be with each and everybody, Lord, and just give them a wonderful week this week. Watch over them, keep them safe. Answer their prayers, Lord, and let your will be done in their lives. Bring us back refreshed, restored, and ready to go. In Jesus' name. Lord bless you.